So welcome to our uh, Wine Simple Happy Hour talk. I know for most of you uh, it is 11 a.m. in the morning in New York. Um, for me it's 5 p.m. Uh, very happy I'm here in Joyce, which is in the Burgenland. And I'm super excited because I meet an old friend, uh, Leo Hillinger. And actually he's the man I am in the U.S. He's the reason. Uh, he built the connection and that's why I traveled to the U.S. and uh, got stuck in a good place. So uh, let's check in. It's a very futuristic uh, winery, super fun. He's a very funny guy, uh, a personality larger than life. He's also very focused on design. And this is his lovely team, right? Hi guys. The people who typically, you know, always the surprise people um, <laughs> who do all the work. Uh, let's not forget that. And this is the entrance of Lee's winery. It was absolutely groundbreaking back in the day. Uh, hello. hello. Tons of cyclists. We get to this topic later. Uh, very Californian style of uh, winery. We get also this and absolutely gorgeous. And there's the man, the legend himself. Always a perfect smile. Hello, Leo. Hey, hello. How are you? Very good. Very good. And as you can tell from these legs, <laughs> he's a cyclist. <laughs> hello. How, how are, are you? you? Very nice to good. see you. You brought a tons of bicycles here. Yeah, you know this is uh, this American brand. This is uh, specialized. S works. See, I have also a, a bike shop. I'm a specialized elite dealer. Yeah. And uh, but bike cycling and uh, and wine is uh, is my passion. You here we have. Um, you told me you cycle roughly around seven and a half thousand miles a year. Yes, around fifteen thousand k's. But not these days because you had a little accident. Yeah, recently, I had an right? accident. I ripped my bandings around my shoulder. In a race? Yeah, in a kind of race, yes. Uh, and 20 yards before the finish line. Right, right no? 20 yards before the finish line. Uh, but you know, it's... So um, you, did, you, you became second. <laughs> you know, I, I, I became... It does not matter me. <laughs> it, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, here uh, Pinot Noir. A Secco Pinot Noir. Uh, 2019 Have a sip. We have roughly 95 degrees Fahrenheit here. So something crisp and fresh is mm. uh, very welcome yeah. And the Burgenland has a similar climate uh, as New York. It's also a little humid especially yeah. these days, huh? Absolutely. And unusually not windy. Yeah, uh, it but is usually windy, but you know if it's that hot then um, the wind is gone, you know, like We were at the beginning of August uh, after tomorrow, and then um, it's only hot. You now we have a content, uh, content, continental uh, climate. It means uh, very hot summer and cold winter, dry winter. Um, to this one is to say, you know, we have here pink ribbon. Uh, one euro from every bottle goes uh, for the cancer, for the chest, chest cancer. Very fresh, fresh huh? great to drink and it invites actually for a second sip absolutely it's like um like strawberries mm -hmm. young strawberry it comes from from young wines um we use the old pinot noir wines for the for the uh, reserve and the young ones for the second so when you started your your professional winemaking career. It's quite an interesting story because uh, you didn't inherit a winery. Yeah, my dad was a wine dealer. Uh, we had uh, nearly one acre vineyards. We bought, my dad bought grapes, different grapes, and uh, made wine, you know, like three kinds of varieties, dry, half dry, and red wine. And, uh, and this uh, in two liter bottles. And this means uh, it was only nothing, you know. We, we had uh, only a few thousand bottles of a very small wine dealer. Yep. And I'm starting that uh, from minus. Yeah, we had about $400,000, uh, $600,000 um, 
problems in the bank Oof. with about 17 18 percent increased and i didn't have any vineyard a half a acre vineyard and uh, then i bought i have grape grow they start to grow grapes so uh, very high quality and then i start to make wine uh, 1990 was my first year to make wine and then uh, 1997 I bought my first winery. I had still problems at a bank and bought another winery uh, for another, uh, yeah, around 600,000. Uh, what I found impressive because most of people, uh, especially people in finance, would have said, let this go, uh, company go bankrupt. But uh, giving up obviously is not your strength. Um, yeah. No, no, but it's, it also tells you a little bit about the family uh, reputation and the heritage. Uh, you don't let pass by, you know, and just uh, give up. It's a very typical thing in, in Europe, especially people stick to their name, people stick to their family traditions. And when you look around, I mean, you're probably one of the most successful winemakers in Austria. There's no question about it. Thank you so much. And uh, are you right? Um, is our traditional, you know, you if you be bankrupt it means you have a special you're sick or something and um and this uh this is in your heart it's in your soul and uh in your brain too and in my brain too um as a businessman you know you, you couldn't there was a wine scandal 1986 my dad was uh was a part of the wine scandal and it was not easy on that time um, to work with that and then uh, so we become big problems uh, uh, as a um, fin financial problems and then I have to buy all the vineyards and to buy tractor and everything and uh, so how did you get the vineyards because uh, I have to admit I had just dinner with Leo two days ago in Hungary and it's, it's actually quite an experience to drive with Leo after him with a lot of uh, <laughs> maniacs. Uh, uh, he beat them all by a long shot. <laughs> you know, we, we speed weren't hairy. Limit, speed limit is unknown for him. Uh, you know, uh, doing all other traffic violations, not a problem for him either. Um, yes. Uh, so you must have a direct contact with the police. Otherwise, this is not possible. No, I'm faster than the police. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> no, it's not very smart, but when we were in border hurry, crossings, you know. he just goes over just the lawn. It doesn't matter either. <laughs> you know, it's, it's wild Austria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a flavor of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you said that you said the story, you know, how you got onto your first vineyards. Uh, and I thought this actually, this is a kind of a classic Leo story. Uh, how you got invited to this man and he offered you his vineyards yeah and he were he were a grape grower he grows grapes for me he were here today he's now 80 years old and um, I, I had him as a grape grower and bought his grapes and I did know special grapes uh, special kind of variety he had three kids no interest uh, about when and our his son and uh, it was a very, very special relationship. And the thing is, and uh, he told me one day, stop, I don't want to work with my kids. You have to buy the winery. And I told him, I don't have any money. And uh, yeah, but I, I, I find a bank and, uh, and those bank gave me another, uh, yeah, under 600,000 euro. On that time, and now I had. That's already when you're in the depth. You're adding another layer on. It's kind yeah. of uh, you feel the water rising. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I don't want to think about. It. Yeah. Should we get okay. into the vineyards? Yeah. I show you. Here is our terrace. Uh, we do also chest brunch. We do the grill and chill. We we have um, uh, like uh, asparagus um, dinner. Oh wow! And here we do picnic. This is our picnic area. Directly in the middle of the vineyard, we have uh, some weddings. Uh, we have also like uh, birthday parties. But the uh, main thing is we want to show the people how it feels to be in the vineyards and make picnic in the middle of the grapes. 
This is the important thing. It's beautiful, huh? Yeah, it's... I mean, today is actually quiet because I think you cl you're about to close your um, your store anyway. Yeah. But I've been here on a, on a Saturday here and the place was just packed. And I thought it was just stunning because you think outside the box. Just making wine is not enough for you. Yeah, we have more than wine. You know, we do some products around wine. You know, not only, you know, we have juice. We have uh, special salt from Zweigelt. We have spice. What do you mean special salt from Zweigelt? We are, you know, Zweigelt is yeah. uh, the kind of variety. The grape variety. Grape variety. And we have uh, salt with that wine. And we have also special herbs, um, like um, with the seeds from from the grapes and uh, we have t-shirts we have everything it's uh, in the US and California it's, it's normal but it, I started in California uh, I think it was uh, 1991 or something and it was amazing they had everything more than wine mm -hmm. and we tried to do products around the wine and this is the important thing we have super quality around the product wine wine is the main part and this main part it is our passion but you have always to do something around the wine but you're very entrepreneurial also you obviously have a tv show yeah i have a tv show i'm uh, also an investor yeah and uh in america they call it um, Shark Tank. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, two minutes, two millions. And I've been now uh, in the jury around six years now. This is my six years, six season. And I've been investor for young people for, for like startups. Yeah. And uh, it makes me happy, you know, to give them a chance to give uh, my experience do them. Well, it's much more difficult to raise money from investors here in Austria than it's in the United States. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you know, we are, we are on the beginning. It's not the United States. Uh, we in Austria, it's the minds are very conservative. And um, I want to show you now here, if we, uh, we, uh, we are here in the Ruizland. This is Sonia Blanc. And you see here, this is shale. You see, this is stone. And this shale, feel, it's warm. Wow. Yeah, it gets the warmness from the day. And you got it in the night. You get the warm temperature to the grapes. And it comes also from the hill, the cool air in the nighttime. That's why this Sauvignon Blanc is um, like um, very mineralic. This makes me absolutely happy. You will taste the Sauvignon You love Sauvignon Blanc, I've noticed this. Yeah. Uh, how come? Um, you know, the Sauvignon Blanc is very difficult to make. I show you, we had last week, we had, uh, we had hail. Yeah. See here. You see here, absolutely, on that side, it's hail. This. So you see really the leaves yeah, here, the how, leaves how here. banged up they are. See, see the leaves here? And I've heard, uh, I saw on the- that side, you see? Mm -hmm. There's no, nothing. Everything is fine because uh, it came from the uh, it came from the west from the west side. Yeah, well, yeah. The bad weather comes always for the west. And uh, Sonia Blanc is uh, very difficult to make. Why? You know, here if you see the grape, this gets full and fuller, and then one grape, one berry goes to the next berry, and there is a lot of pressure between the berries. And the skin is very skinny. And very thin. Very, very thin. Yeah. And then you have like um, a mold. Yeah. The first mold starts with one berry and then goes to the other it berry. It goes very quickly, it's yeah. It's very hard to make good Sauvignon Blancs. And you need a lot of leaves. You need shade. Yeah. Not only in the sun. But you keep this part without leaves, no? Yeah, no, 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 no. No, I leave yeah. the leaves. Okay. Very important, shade. Shade is the fruit. Mm -hmm. And the fruit is in the skin, and we would do whole bar fermenting. But a part of the Sauvignon Blanc will uh, be with a whole bar fermenting. You know the, the whole, the whole cluster, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think 
My my ideas are like uh, to do the fermenting with the skin and with the meat uh, after five days, and then uh, then you press it. Then you press it. Can you explain us here because it's so picturesque? Yeah, this is you obviously Joyce here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit if I can. This is your hometown. Yeah, my hometown. I'm and growing up here. You see a lot of wind power back there. Right, you know, we have 1,000 on the back. Yeah, and there's another part of, uh, further, even further down here. Right, and here is the lake. The lake. You see the lake there? But this is only the start. You know, we are the biggest uh, step lake in uh, Europe. It's only like one and a half meter deep. It comes only till here. One half meter is about uh, five feet. Five feet yeah. high. So lake. for normal people, it would go up to up to here. <laughs> from to here, for Leo, it just goes down to here. Oh, right, and you know, but it's so funny. But there are boats on that lake. It's a uh, it's a sweet water lake, and uh, it's uh, there is a huge national park. It's um, it's one of the biggest national parks worldwide, and this lake makes a very special climate uh, i've been actually here with a couple of bunch of sommeliers from the united states and i told them this lake is only you know five six uh, feet deep and we had waves about three feet and the and the wind was blowing like insane and they said there is no way this is only as as shallow and said sure you can jump in there you're not gonna drown yeah and it was quite amazing and here we have one of you what you talked about before one of your picnics and again, I just, I've never seen this before. Uh, but again, this is kind of, yeah, I this was you. the remarkable part. Uh, you think outside of the box. Yeah, you see more than one. We have a picnic uh, area here. You could picnic. Let's see here, we have uh, food, chocolate, wine, everything in. And here we have um, Pinot Blanc, Light the Big. This is, uh, one of the interesting wines what we have, Pinot Blanc Leiterbeck, uh, is um, fermented and stored in 3,000 liters oak barrels. And it's on the hill on the Leiterbeck. You see there, this is, um, the area there is called Old Hill. And, uh, Alterberg. Alterberg, yeah. And we have their uh, chalk, and chalk um, is perfect for Pinot Noir, Pinot Blanc. So, Ladisberg will be here. It's another one yeah, of your home of cruise, no? Yeah, there's hill too. Is um, is Ladisberg, and the light uh, hills starts here. There's uh, very soft hills, and uh, it goes up uh, to the next uh, uh, towns. We have uh, vineyards from here. To the roost. So you're quite a busy man, huh? Yeah, we work uh, we work very hard, but it's not only me. It's a um, whole team. I have a very very good team. I'm very happy with my team, and they live my life. Um, you were with a tasting with my yeah. team, and they they are a part of my heart. You know, it's like. Uh, so you just see the size. What I said with the lake. Uh, for normal people, the water goes here. For him, it goes up to here. Uh, yeah. Mm. It's fresh. Yeah. It's tasty. Tasty. And invites for another glass of wine. Absolutely. And I think what I see often on wine, you know, often we freaks, you know, we look for this complexity, this complexity. This is a wine which I see always normal consumers who don't want to make a fuss about wine, just want to have something really good. They're very happy with that. Uh, and I don't mean to be in a condescending way. It's just, uh, it's something which I often observe because especially for sommeliers, we often don't read the client in the first 10 seconds when we interact with them very quick enough. And then we over challenge them or we challenge them too hard. And this is a wine actually where you can give to They see wines different, but very important is you have to have fun with the wine.
Okay, we're back. We had a little, we had a little commercial break um, about the Leo Hingler cosmetic products. Yeah. Right? How did you get on this one? Yeah, you know, wine and more. Uh, it means uh, we'll do also, you know, with the skins and with the seeds, we do creams. Very important is uh, anti oxidation for the skins. And it's a nature product. We have 15 years now organic and uh, we have organic cosmetic, wine cosmetic. So what made you change to going into organic? You know, um, before organic means you have to, to think different. Uh, this is a way of life for me to be organic. Um, organic is without pesticides. Um, I don't, um, we do like a lot of um, um, biotechnology like work. We, we work uh, very special, we have a lot of hand work in the units and then we don't need pesticides. This means it's important for me. It's healthier for us, no? Yeah, absolutely. Should we go in the cellar? Yeah, here are the presses. Um, we have here, you know, the boxes. We, we do the, the grapes into the boxes. And here we have special presses, very special, possible. To Obviously covered right now. Yeah, to cool and, uh, and uh, to make very good work. Please, come into the cellar. And finally, it's cool. Ah, oh, this is good. <laughs> now, it's quite hot outside. Um, yeah, now we have, uh, we have that cellar. And, uh, I know this lovely man, which is hiding uh, here behind the barrel. This is Christian, this is our cellar master. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's very shy. Uh, he's that's very why we chase him. Uh, he has a face. <laughs> Yeah, we want to yeah. taste uh, from the barrel, huh? That would be great. Yeah. Thank you, Ross. Yeah. Hello. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we have stainless steel tanks and also oak barrels. We have around 2,000 oak barrels where we store uh, our premium, premium wines from White Pine Hill 2 the whole light of eggs and also the reds. You know, what is, um, what is the special on the barrel? 225 liters is a very small barrel. 225 liters is a small thing, but with a lot of micro oxidation. It means there is very li uh, little wine in a big barrel. For the entire surface. Right, you do micro oxidation and then um, the wine, it's a totally different ripeness into the barrel than in a tank. The fermenting is into the tank, but the storage is in the barrel. Back there. Perfect. There you go. Thank you so much, you okay. friend. Berries. Berries, 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 chocolate. It's from the oak, you know, we have different tastings. We have the, the most of the... There's a little oak. pepperiness too, huh? Yeah, black, like black pepper. Yeah. See here, the Tonnelier is from France. They, made, uh, they make um, the best uh, oak barrels. And um, they are the expensive one, but uh, the oak barrels are perfect. Just out of curiosity, how much does an oak barrel cost? Um, Roughly. Right. To around 700 to 1,000 euro. Um, it For roughly 300 bottles. Right, 300 bottles. It's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Um, and how often do you, you reuse them? We use them for, for the Grand Reserve, for Hill 1, for Pinot Noir Reserve. We use them maximum three years. It means we change, we do first first uh, uh, filling, second filling, and th uh, third filling, and, uh, and then we mix it. But we use the barrels five to ten years. It means for smaller wines, we use them. We, we steam the barrels completely, and then to we wash start them. Mm -hmm. wash them, and then we start to grow. You're in a very good topic here. Can you explain, because often people have this myth 100% new oak sounds of obviously very expensive, is it, but it's not necessarily good. Uh, not for me, you know, 
I don't want to say it's bad. No, but it's... It's not my way. Yeah. Um, I think um, it should be a good mix between first win, second, and third. Third years. And uh, some of the wine, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon needs more oak. And uh, like a Pinot Noir... It's needs less. Less. And this is my philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's our philosophy. And we, we do a lot of um, um, like experimental in winemaking and uh, we learn every year after now 30 years i'm starting 30 years ago and uh, after 30 years every year we learn still still so we talk about climate change and it's sadly in america often a politicized topic do you see this in the last 10 15 years because yeah. it's a very hot day today obviously yeah. uh, i'll do we taste, uh, we did taste in Hungarian about 40 uh, different wines, 40 different wines in one day. And you see, uh, from 1999 till now, uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's absolutely, it's crazy uh, how the climate changed. Of course, you know, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the different times of the years, they mix. This is the, you know, you, uh, 30 years ago there was winter, there was harvest, spring and summer. Now it mixed. It is mixed. It's before, we had also very mild uh, January, February, right? right so the plant really doesn't fall asleep. Right. No snow, it means no water. Then we had big water problems. Then we got, you know, till end of April, very hot April. And then in June, May, we get water. Mm -hmm. It was completely different than normal. And you know, the temperature is very high. You have to, to be careful as winemaker here in our very hot climate to make good, fresh, and fruity white wines and also big reds. And then nice Pinot Noirs. This is, you know, this is the masterclass. To make in, in one area all of those wines. You know, for example. But here with the elevation, it's quite helpful, no? I mean, we talk about 100 yards in altitude, and uh, it's quite different. You go up to Pinot, Pinot grapes versus further down, you can work on. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's, it's a couple hundred meters. It's not, it's not like, you know, if you say if 500 meters, or oh, this is a big difference. Um, but here it's, it's quite, um, quite the same. You have to, to work with uh, like uh, forest, very close to the forest, and then get the cold air from like cold areas where you have um, north faced um, locations. North faced locations are better for us, for whites and for peanuts. Because they're colder, they're cold. not as much sun exposure. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. It's tasty, huh? Well, what is it? Very nice. Yeah, this is a, a cuvee, and this is the most um, a sixty percent Syrah, and this is Merlot and Zweigold. Now, I have to put you under the spot, uh, and I know you're very sensitive about this, but you test also a lot. You'd run a lot of trials, and when I tasted with you the other day. Uh, with Peter, you tried also, you give your people also kind of experiments to, to make trials. How do you feel about that when something doesn't go right? Um, I feel very sensitive. You know, it's like uh, to work with my kids. Um, I don't want to have somebody who be not too careful with my kids. Um, respect for the product. Every grape is, is thank you from somewhere. And uh, we, have, we have to say thank you for every grape. And then you have wine and you have to respect wine. And it means the grapes, they grow into the vineyard. Mm -hmm. We have to bring the grapes, the quality of the grapes into the cellar and make no mistakes. Bring the grapes without mistakes in the bottles. This, we're not artists. 
We try our best to make the best from that quality of the grapes to bring it in bottle. Ah, it uh, smells delicious. I know this was a flying change, thanks to our angels here. Thank you. Who <laughs> work very hard. <laughs> this is tasty, huh? Mm. Yeah. No, but this is, this is what I was thinking. You, know, you can experiment a lot. And of course, when, when people visit the winery, winemakers always show, you know, they line up the well behaved children up in the front, and the naughty children are locked away. It's the same with winemaking. But the thing is, it's, very, it's imperative for a winemaker to run trials, to see how far can you go, what is possible, what's not. It's a little bit like cooking in a sense. Um, so you learn because the years change, we get warmer and the alcohols are rising. So how can you temper, how can you moderate that? Yeah, it's every year is different. There is not even one year the same as the year before. It's always different. Um, some year nearly the same, but uh, the most of the years are totally different. Mm -hmm. We have 2014, a very cold year, very bad rats, super Pinot Noirs, very nice whites. And you know you have oh, years 2003, 2006. It was very difficult for Pinot Noirs and for whites, and then you have big rats. So this is, this is another thing I always experience uh, working in a restaurant. People always ask you, is this a good vintage? Right. But they never ask, is it a good vintage for white or for red? Because uh, what typically, it's rarely the same. Okay. Yeah? Because white likes it cooler, red likes it warmer, for, on a general note. And also, um, I think I like, I like it, a discussion about wine making. You are not only a sommelier to make it like that. You are a guy who say, you know, I like to make the understandable, make everything understandable for the end consumer. The end consumer is the wine drinker. And then, you know, we could talk about uh, like five, six hours about a glass of wine. But you could drink three bottles in two, three, six hours. Yeah. And this is the important thing. And it's certainly number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and have fun about it and enjoy life. Yeah, and this is, this is also, this is my passion to, to make not only wine for myself. I do wine or make wine for wine lovers. For people who like wine. If you, have this wine in the nose. You know exactly you have this on a briefing, on a sommelier briefing. And you smell this is an explosion. Yeah, it's an explosion, it's Gelbo Muscadella. This is so outstanding. It is amazing. This is, I'm really thankful that you opened this wine because Yellow Moscow has often a very odd reputation because it comes from old feelings. But to me, uh, often these are incredible aperitif wines. You make a very vinous style, so it's a very, it's not as tart. It's really generous and it's so aromatic. And it's just flavorful. Often, you know, we get caught up in drinking, you know, only two handfuls of wine or grape varieties. We drink Chardonnay, we drink Sauvignon Blanc, we drink Riesling, Pinot Noir. But this is a variety which is, if you, have, if you love Sauvignon Blanc, try, try uh, Gero Moscatella and you're going to love it. It's maybe a touch simpler, but it's super delicious on a hot day. Absolutely. Yeah. And it makes also, I know in the burger land, you cannot go in any place and they don't offer you a spritzer. Right. This is a spritzer. Yeah, I mean, I know this respect, but it's just very Absolutely. aromatic. Aromatic. And in the hot summer days, like today, very hot summer days, it makes it funny, you know? Yeah. And it's obviously not dismissing a wine, but if you, you can only make a good spritzer, uh, a good wine. A good wine. It's like cooking, you know. You cannot make uh, a good uh, dish Sauce. without without any kind of terrible ingredients. Uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna be a world class dish. And very important is you can't make a good sauce with bad wine. In the good one. Yeah. yeah. And the good wines. Excellent. Cool. Do you want to show us quickly the barriques there? Yeah, we will. Yeah. yeah?
Aloha, everything is clean, huh? Yeah. But you like, you like, this is very austere, huh? very cleanliness. Very important. You know, we work with, uh, we, we work with food, and that's why everything has to be clean. You have to just check the reception. Yeah. Uh, yes. Before we go in another commercial break, <laughs> well, what, is li what is life without fun? So, I have to show you one thing because this is currently everyone is talking about. Jancis Robinson wrote recently about it. This is the benchmark uh, kind of uh, oak producer or barrel producer, Stokinger. Whenever you go around, this is right now the... Franz Stokinger. Uh, the golden standard. Absolutely. The but a gold standard. It makes me happy, you know, you see we have a lot of barrels and from, from France and he makes us very happy. Good producer, Austrian producer with international wood. And again, you can travel to Burgundy, you find Stockinger. You go down to, to Tompier, you find Stockinger. Um, he is all over right now and highly, highly respected. So, wow, it smells so good in here. Yeah. That's why I love to go in a in a in a oak cellar. You can see smell this kind of fresh vanilla. It's just really delicious. I love this wine. Uh, it's, yeah, it's too. You see, but you can smell smoke, yeah. and you know if you. But you rub it. You don't smell it. <laughs> yeah, but I smell. <laughs> it. And then you know if the wine, if the barrels are coming, mm -hmm. then you have to toast it. You open and toast. It's like uh, vanilla simmered. It's uh, like chocolate, like uh, cacao, unbelievable. What a taste. Excellent. Um, we can taste one quick wine. Yeah. Pinot and then, then we do a wrap. Pinot Noir is very, very important. And this is often the, uh, the artistic part. Uh, you have to climb often as Hellas and it's narrow. That's and not that, know, we, we, not we that they have two fat people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a good friend, Piero Enchisa, from Bodega Chakra. Uh, he fell down and oh, broke all his ribs. Um, yeah, so um, many people always think wine making is romantic. It's actually <laughs> really, really hard work. And uh, it's risky. It's risky. <laughs> Yeah, Pinot Noir is one of the important stuff. That's your other favorite variety, you know? Yes, yeah, it's my other. It's, it's very hard to make. Nice Sauvignon Blanc and nice Pinot Noir to make. Very sensitive grapes. The, the skinny... Um, the, the skin... You know, Pinot Noir in America is very beloved. The reason, what do we see? The reason why he's dumping the wine is he's seasoning the glasses. Uh, because we often have detergent remainers in there um, and that's how you get it out. You know, this is so typical Pinot Noir, you see the form is white. The color is perfect uh, for Pinot Noir and it's stored, it's 2017 in the big oak barrel. Uh, oh, we have Gian Pablo Veneca on there. You know Veneca, uh, from Veneca and Veneca? No. Super producer down in Friuli. Makes a really great Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, you should try it. Uh, he's on here. P no, Pierre, this was a couple of years ago because he asked, he felt. He's, he's already back. He's, I think he's sitting in Tuscany right now and enjoying life. <laughs> he's the guy you need to meet. He's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. God, this smells good. Yeah, and, you know, when is this going to get bottled? Um, about two months, mm -hmm. another two months, and then we have now 2015, and now we get to 2016. And you know, we have to marry different oak girls together. It means to store the different girls, pump it together, and then store uh, around two months to get it. Um, and why would you? put different barrels together. Can you explain us that? Yeah, you know, every barrel is different. And um, it's, it's like different people, and they get married. We say, as a winemaker, 
we got married. We married the different barrels together to be one wine. Now, for a normal uh, for a normal person, um, says why would be a barrel different? Different barrel. It's, it's uh, because you have it's different from a different area. Every single wood barrel is makes different wines. Completely different. I know this is this. It's very hard to explain yeah. to someone uh, because you probably have uh, spontaneous fermentation. Yeah. You don't inoculate, so yeast is very hard to control, and then oak is also different. And this is this is the funny thing, and this is the wine making makes wine making so interesting. It's not like uniform. Every year, every barrel, everything is different. This makes my job so, so dressing and nice. Oh, this is absolutely perfect. And I cannot thank you enough for doing this. I know we, I think we keep it around 45 minutes, so this is the social distancing. In Austria, we're pretty safe. So thank you for coming along to this wine sample happy hour talk. Thank you, guys. You actually were uh, kind of the guinea pig because I've never done a live talk uh, in a vineyard, but I'm going to do a couple more. So thank you for doing this. I know you would be a great sport. And I still, these legs, <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Very powerful. Hello. Cheers. Hey, guys, have fun. And a much more harder hat because he, he can tackle some cycling. I know you did the Östa Marathon. And Three times. Three times. Peace. <laughs> yeah. So it's a feast, that's true. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>